So welcome everyone to our information session here for Thursday, November 29th. We like to call this session, Find Your Fit with Make a Change Canada. I'd like to introduce myself to start. I am Anne-Marie Edgar, and I'm the Executive Director of Make a Change Canada. I've now been with Make a Change Canada for almost 12 years. It's been a wonderful period in my life. Uh, continue to grow and thrive myself just interacting with our clients throughout Canada on really almost a day-to-day -day basis. So it's an immensely enjoyable experience and every individual is so different. So really it's had such a great impact on my life as well. I'd also like to introduce the other staff in our room here today is Rory Case. And Rory is our online community and content coordinator. And she's actually here to record our session today because we do use the session to distribute to people who request it who haven't been able to attend the session. So thanks to Rory, she's here to assist me. Uh, today we've had a bit of a mishap with the weather. We have two program staff in New Brunswick who are completely snowed in, one without power, and therefore were unable to attend, unfortunately. Um, but that will mean that the session will go a little bit faster so uh, without further ado, I'd like to get started. Um, but just a quick note on confidentiality. I will be sharing some client stories today, their testimonials, photos, and I just want to assure you that we do have the full consent from the people involved to share the information. A lot of times our graduates and participants are happy to spread their stories around um, as examples of some of the different outcomes made possible through Make a Change Canada. Um, so yes, the, the session is being recorded, number one, and uh, confidentiality in terms of the information being shared has been assured. So again, welcome. I hope you enjoy today's session. And do feel free just to type any questions you have in the chat area, anything that arises at all, and I'll be happy to address, address your questions throughout the presentation. So this is a really nice visual here that gives an overview of Make a Change Canada as a whole. We really have three areas of programming right now. Our first is called the Business Abilities Program, and this is an all online program offering tools for employment and self-employment. And this program is open to people who self-identify as living with a disability. Our second area of programming are our web development and design certificates. Again, the programs are online and our students are learning skills in the technology field, um, in particular, the development and design of websites. And this program is available to anyone meeting the eligibility criteria. So not just people living with disabilities, but people from Indigenous communities, LGBTQ communities, people feeling pressured and extra stress and difficulty juggling, perhaps their single parents, older workers, youth. Um, they're really spe it's a specialized program that's supportive in nature. And then what we are doing as well now is we've started a social enterprise called Rogers Fire Nuggets. And I'll give you some information about Rogers Fire Nuggets a little bit later on here. So first though, just to start a little bit of history about Make Change Canada. So our organization was originally started through Community Futures, actually here in Nelson, British Columbia, where I'm located. And it was originally called the Canadian Society for Social Development. Uh, this was in 2004. And the interesting thing about it is that we had already been running some programs through Community Futures. You can see that in 2004, we were also the recipient of some very prestigious awards, uh, the Minister's Award of Excellence for Innovation and a National Award for Community-Based Learning Opportunities. And that was through the Conference Board of Canada. So the thing was, we were already running the programs through Community Futures for a few years uh, before they started the Canadian Society for Social Development. But those programs um, won those awards really early on then. And in 2005, we were granted 
charitable status. So um, became a registered charity in Canada. Moving along, uh, in 2008, we opened up our web development and design program to anyone that qualifies. Initially, it was a piloted program and only available to people who self-identify as living with a disability. But we opened it all up in 2008. And, and that's been a really good move for the organization, uh, br bringing to us really a wider vari variety of clientele to our programs and you know, a really, really great area of development for the organization. Now in 2015, we had the opportunity to become incorporated on it, some new legislation in Canada. And, and that's called a transition process that we went through, um, which was wonderful. So, but in that process, we were able to change our name and we changed our name to Make a Change Canada. So that's been a real positive thing. I think it's a name that speaks a lot more clearly about what we do here and speaks to a wider audience. So the name had definitely run its course, our old name, and we're very happy with our new name. And I mean, I hope you like it too. And in that year, we also great, gained accreditation under Imagine Canada Standards Program, another great accomplishment. Skipping ahead a bit, in 2018, uh, December actually, about this time last year, we gained a credit certification through Employment and Social Development Canada as an educational institution. And a little bit technical here, but also an exemption through the Private Career Training Institute in British Columbia. Anyway, what that all means is that our web development programs are completely fundable. So um, if, if a student wants to go out into the local community and apply for training funding, this is an eligible program. Or if a student wants to perhaps draw on their RSP uh, funding, then, then that's another avenue. Okay, so uh, that was really great to get that certification in place. Uh, Beka Change Canada has a really solid history in providing online training programs. We are actually the pioneer in the field of online training for people facing employment challenges. And to date, we have served over 2,500 clients through our programs. Okay, so still some sort of basic information about the organization. Uh, we have a new mission statement, and I'll just read it out to you here. So what are we all about day to day here? Our mission is to develop and deliver online training programs and mentorship to anyone facing barriers to employment. We are a hub for job seekers, employers, and partner agencies seeking to empower themselves or others to realize their full economic, social, and human potential. Any information like this that you'd like to find can be found on our charity website, makeachangecanada.com. Okay, so, Moving into a, bit, a little bit more detail here. So who actually takes our programs and what would interest them in our programs in particular? So this is what we found is that in our web development design programs, uh, as I've mentioned, they're open to anyone who's eligible. People want a flexible learning environment. So uh, what we find with our clients is there's so much going on and the flexibility allows our clients to say work around um, family life, family life, other commitments, um, perhaps working, holding down a job, they're still able to engage in a training program at the same time. So the flexibility of the program is very beneficial. We find that a lot of our clients join the program because they want to maintain and build their own website rather than hiring an IT person, um, which can be a little bit more difficult, sort of this tech crunch as they're calling it, uh, can be hard to find the talent and the prices can be exorbitant to hire uh, someone to help you with a website. So that's another rationale. And uh, of course, a lot of our clients want to develop or expand their skill sets in the information technology area, which is booming at this time. Uh, kind of more on the business ability side, again, it's open to anyone who self-identifies as living with a disability. Now our clients 
really want to increase their level of earnings. So uh, what we find is that our clients want to have really a reason to, to get up in the morning. Um, they want to feel some value, um, have a purpose, and rather than just sort of letting life happen, our clients are really motivated. So our clients want to find a way to increase their earnings. A lot of our clients do want to work for, from home. Now, that's not a given. Uh, there's all sorts of employment that our clients are gaining in, in shops, um, in the bricks and mortar world, but definitely there are, it, it is really a, online and um, some of our clients are working as bloggers, so writers, editors, uh, really you name it, consultants. Um, I'll give you a bit more of an idea of the areas that our graduates are moving into, but um, that's a big part of it. And our clients really want quality programming and they, they really want um, something that's going to work with their own personal circumstances. I've got to say that our clients a lot of times really check us out before they go ahead and sign up for the program. So quality is important as well. Now, here's the wonderful thing about our programs being flexible and online that there's plenty of time for coffee breaks as well. So that's always the hidden bonus of taking part in an online program. It's my little joke for the day, and I promise you that's my only joke. Okay, so digging a little bit deeper here, what are the program benefits? So again, the programs are online, allowing for the greatest flexibility and all our programs are also supportive in nature. Our clients can work when they want and they can continue to meet their daily obligations. Uh, clients receive one-on-one -on -one assistance when they need it and ongoing support. So our clients aren't just left to flounder. We do have a level of accountability where if we're not hearing from a client, we're definitely checking in and offering that encouragement and support all along the way. There's an opportunity to network with other participants in the program and also to gain exposure for your work. So we do have some annual events and publications each year where our clients are able to really take part and showcase their work, such as a, a website that they've built or perhaps a creation that they've put together. So that's really nice as well. Now, our programs allow our clients to maintain their freedom, mobility, and leave their options open. So it's not uncommon for clients in our program to even move all across the country, um, and, but still be able to stay engaged in the learning program and move forward with their career direction. We also see some clients who have a need to pick up some employment and work, and that's also possible uh, through the online programming. Okay, so with that down under our belt, then who are our clients and what brings them to Make a Change Canada? We're really serving the gamut of the Canadian population. And let's face it, who doesn't face some sort of challenges in the labor market these days? It's not easy. It's, it's not easy for a person who doesn't live with a disability. I mean, I can speak for myself coming out of university when I did. And I like to joke that I had a 20 year job search because it was, it was hugely challenging and, and I don't live with a disability. So, so who doesn't face challenges, but when you've got additional challenges, you're lacking in skill, um, you're juggling family commitments, taking care of, say, your older parents or um, what have you, whatever challenges you're facing, this is a great organization to get connected to because that's exactly what we're about. So we are serving the whole gamut from youth, older workers, Indigenous peoples, people with formal educations right down to lacking education, people who are employed or not or unemployed. Um, also, there's a big component of us serving people living in rural and remote areas. So unable to attend training in their local community, uh, experienced business people and those who are new to business. So makes life interesting definitely here in our work. 
Now, this image that you see on the right-hand side of the screen, this was actually taken from a big survey that we did back in 2011, 2012. We had a formal research project completed by a professional researcher. And we asked, who are you? And you can just see here that disability plays into it big. Um, definitely people living with disabilities, you can see lacking, you can see university in here, older, children, um, college, rural. So, so I, th I think that's a nice visual because it really shows in writing um, the words that came to us from our clients themselves about who they are. So I just want to first talk about our business abilities program. The web address is businessabilities.ca. Now the program is really amazing actually. It's an entrepreneurial program, but clients in the program do start with some self-exploration because if you're considering self-employment, the number one question is, do I really want to do this? Am I really suitable? Do I have the means? to make this happen and if the answer is no and employment would be a better stream for for you then we actually do have employment resources as well to help uh, our clients perform a job search prepare for that job search interviewing networking we've got all that material as well the program itself um, has a lot of website resources with training videos reading material and some very useful links. The clients go through the program completing worksheets. And for the business plan itself, for our entrepreneurial clients, once they've completed all the worksheets, that's actually forming their business plan. So it's a wonderful progression. We have webinars online, much like this, with our staff giving presentation, as well as bringing in some guest speakers. And the really great thing about the Business Ability Program is actually the staff. And I can't speak more highly of the business coaches. They are amazing. They, they love what they do. Not only that, but they're true entrepreneurs. So it's people, you know, your coach is someone who's been there, done that. They've succeeded. They've failed. They've tried many different types of businesses. And they're really, really dedicated to serving their clients. So... That's really what our clients have told us they value most about the program is the is the one on one assistance. So our clients go through an orderly progression moving through the program, beginning with this career decision making stage and then getting into the real learning about what it means to operate a business and planning it all out, forming a business plan. And then we continue to support our clients through their business startup in what's called phase two of the program. So it's nice, it's flexible. It's not a program that's say set in stone where you sign up for it and you're given three months to complete it and you're expected to be 100% employed or self-employed at the end or six months or even a year. It's super flexible, and this is the beauty of, of the Business Abilities program as well. So it really works for people living with disabilities in that regard. The eligibility for the program, now I've already touched on this, that really the big thing about the eligibility is that our clients are those who self-identify as living with a disability. So bear in mind, there's no formal documentation required, no, no doctor's report, psychological studies, all that sort of thing. It's really an open program. And incidentally, it's funded under the Opportunities Fund for people with disabilities under the national funding umbrella. And the key right there is that Opportunities Fund. It's providing an opportunity to so many people who otherwise would not have an opportunity. Um, and, and to me, this is super touching. So um, keep that in mind that it's a really open accessed program. Okay, well, let's take a look at what disability types, what day-to-day um, -day situations and conditions the clients in the Business Abilities Program are reporting. 
So you can see within this, again, a word cloud that came out of our research study, there is definitely a lot of mental health issues that our clients are facing. So in particular, there's high anxiety and depression. We're also seeing clients who, with, with I would say quite a great degree, have acquired brain injury. So that's pretty common. There's people who have experienced um, injuries. So there's a lot of spinal cord injuries, mobility issues, back issues. Um, in fact, what our study found is that our clients are living with daily chronic pain to a real high degree. So they're reporting an awful lot of chronic pain and mobility issues. And those are sort of ancillary to the disability types themselves. Okay, so those are sort of the common themes, but we're serving clients across the whole spectrum of disability. So we have clients, have had clients who are blind, um, deaf, um, all sorts of, you know, um, say treated as a child for cancer, and that's caused a disability in, in adulthood. Um, a lot of like the fibromyalgia, um, you name it, where we've, we've served clients with um, cerebral palsy, everything, everything. So I think that's also what's really special about our organization is that we just don't focus on certain types of disabilities. Okay, so that was the Business Abilities Program. And I'm going to now move into our web development and design programs. We have two programs. And weirdly, we are home of Canada's original online web development skills training program. We've been delivering this program now for 14 years. So it's, it's really got a really strong history and we haven't missed one year at all. So it's been going strong and continues to go strong. And uh, we have an introductory program, which is six months in duration. This is a full-time program of study, 780 hours in duration with nine courses over six months. And students who successfully graduate earn a certificate in web development and design. And the program fee is $3,995 for that program. And again, it is a fundable program. Our other program is the advanced program and it's four and a half months in duration. It um, is 540 hour program with four courses and graduates earn an advanced certificate in applied web development and design. Each course is $495 for the course fee or $1,980 for the whole program. Now, the courses in the programs, we're in the introductory program. This is pretty typical for a web development program. Um, but the really interesting thing actually is that web development programs have become very specialized now where either you move into development or you move into design, but we're teaching the full spectrum. We're teaching design and development. And that, I feel, is really giving our graduates an edge in the marketplace. And, you know, probably more so than that, a better grip on, on where they exactly wanna niche themselves in the tech sector where they really want to work, whether they um, want to work on content, whether they want to work in Photoshop with layout, um, um, mocking up websites visually, or whether they want to get into the back end development and the configuration side of things and the programming end. But that's we're teaching all aspects of web development. So that's quite unique. Uh, students are learning coding, introductory coding. Uh, upon which the whole internet is based, um, HTML and CSS programming. We have two courses in Photoshop, uh, proper design of websites, site theory and design, the proper approach to building a website. And uh, 
As far as the site building itself, we're teaching the latest technologies using libraries and frameworks to build websites. And also the marketing, web marketing, teaching search engine optimization, so that when you build a website, it's actually going to get some traffic uh, from the surfing public. So we're teaching that as well. And then the program ends off with a practicum project where students are building their own customized website. So here's the key about the program is that we strongly believe at Make a Change Canada that yes, you could pick up with some sort of do-it-yourself web builder program, but there are gaps that are occurring by doing that where you can't actually get in and customize a program the way you need to. Maybe you're dealing with some advertising that you don't want on your website. Um, it's really necessary if you're going to be a web developer to actually learn the skills involved. Uh, we firmly believe that. There's other organizations um, perhaps out there that feel like it's a turnkey type of business idea to get into web development, but um, our approach is, is to really see that anybody wishing to enter the field is well equipped to do so. The advanced program is sort of a similar progression of courses, but we're teaching um, some more advanced programming and database design, PHP and MySQL, and those are hugely in-demand skills in today's labor market. Uh, so those are great courses to take. We're teaching more advanced web marketing and the tools for SEO course. And then again, the program ends with a practicum where students are building a blogging site through a custom configured WordPress content management system. Great skills again. Um, so between the two programs, we're teaching the light coding of a website and then the heavy coding of a website through WordPress. Both are viable alternatives to, to offer in the marketplace. And, um, you know, I can't say enough for the curriculum and how thorough this is in preparing students to go out and work in the field. This is where I really start to get excited, <laughs> if I'm not already, but uh, I really am thrilled with the opportunities that are available for those entering the IT field, the communications field today. It is literally exploding. There is a skill shortage, a tech crunch, and it's only going to get worse. It was a couple of years ago that I really began speaking in depth with some of our graduates. And I was speaking with one of our graduates who's from this area in, in British Columbia uh, one day. And, you know, got to talking, so how's it going? And she said, well, there's definitely no shortage of work. She says, I am so busy. I'm able to pick and choose what work I take. So she doesn't have to take whatever's coming her way. She was charging good money for the work. But then she got reflective and she sort of paused in the conversation. And she, she said, you know, Anne-Marie, it's really busy. It's, but it's only going to get worse. And she started to sort of sound a bit fearful um, with how much opportunity there was out there. So I think it's a bit overwhelming at times with, with all the opportunity. We have another client who's um, more from the Okanagan area and she's graduated several years ago. Now she works more in the marketing area, the social media um, promotion of businesses through uh, e-commerce and whatnot. And she worked in a traditional way in print media and sort of what had become old fashioned and event coordination, that kind of thing. But she was able to, through participating in the program, develop a marketing firm. And those were her comments was the ability just to pick and choose her work was really key for her. And that's the point she really quickly was able to take her business up to. Uh, her story is really interesting because she has a child living with a disability, but an extreme disability that was pulling her away from her employment to the point where 
she could no longer hold down a regular job. Uh, her, her employers would no longer really tolerate that she had to leave work to, to support her son and, and pick him up from school quite frequently. She was at the point where her local career community agency was speaking with her about going on social assistance. That was her only choice. That was the point she was at. And her thought was, well, then I'm going to have to sell my car because you can't have an asset if you're on social assistance. I guess that's the way things were then. And she says, well, I can't sell my car because I've got to take my son to all these appointments. So thankfully, thankfully for her, she was able to discover our programs and saw that she actually did have an alternative and she's just doing amazingly well today. So, um, but you know, that's a couple of client outcomes, but all these listings that I've got here are actual occupations that our graduates have moved into. They're working in information technology as web programmers and developers mobile apps builders, web administrators, uh, doing graphic and web design, doing e-commerce. So we've had a graduate who worked at Value Village and was laying out their e-commerce pages, like their product pages. That was her specific role. Uh, project management, we've had a graduate move into really directing a large scale website development project. And she didn't really have to touch the program herself. Um, she was working at that high level as a project manager. We have clients move into entrepreneurship. So we do have website owners. We have clients come in and build their own websites. We have small business owners specially, specializing in communications and social media. And uh, e-commerce advisors as well. And this is really interesting. So we also have graduates moving into the administration field or re-entering the administration field as webinar assistants, technical administrative assistants, technical customer service reps, online communications coordinators, and virtual assistants, which are like virtual secretaries in a sense. So this has really come into play when we've had some clients come into our program perhaps have had an amazing background and career working in administration, high level administrative executive assistant, but they've reached that glass ceiling and can no longer attract the attention of an employer. So they're really in a bad situation in that sense. And they realize that if they can pick up the technology skills then they're gonna have an edge in the market, in the labor market. And that is in fact what has occurred. And I, I hear it from clients all the time where they're getting good jobs with regional districts, local government, um, real estate offices, chambers of commerce, nonprofit agencies, because they can walk in now to that job interview and say, yes, I can answer the phone, but I can also update your website. I can produce some visual materials for you while I'm at it. I can code your YouTube videos so that they're going to be most effective and so on and so forth. So they're coming in with some value added and they are finding employment. So this is super promising and um, a really viable career track to re-enter the labor market in a, in a much better way. Finally, um, under the marketing umbrella, a lot of our graduates do gravitate to working in marketing. So falling into roles like web marketing coordinator, blogger, blogging and social media coordinator, and online communications coordinator. So we do definitely have graduates working as bloggers, writers, and the technology skills are essential for working in any of these fields. We have a graduate who specifically just wanted to earn a certain amount of extra income and what she's doing is specializing in designing web banners. So web banners for social media um, profiles, that type of thing. So I hope this gives you a really good idea of all the opportunity out there and you know perhaps it can spark some ideas in your mind where you've got some background and, or an interest in photography and what could that look like? Or, 
maybe you love to write and 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 how can that be cultivated in, in such a manner how can you steer yourself in a direction that's going to work for you in future that's what we're here for so um i'll leave it at that but some really really it's a promising promising area to move into the eligibility for the web development programs uh, so again a really open access program so we do look for applicants who have a specific interest in learning web development so i think that can be said for any educational program it has to be a fit um, now as far as prior education goes it's really open so we do look for grade 12 graduation but barring that there are definitely adult learners coming in who have not yet earned their grade 12 but have that basis that they're going to be successful in the program that they have a real good chance of completing the learning program um, again, you don't need to have a high level of computer skills. Definitely, if you can't send an email or, you know, can't send a file by email and that type of thing, don't understand a file system on a computer at all, then you're probably better off to go and get some basic computer training before undertaking this program. But we don't require experts at using computers for, for this program. Of course, students need to have a suitable computer with internet. They need to be able to commit to the program 20 or 30 hours per week. It's not a light course load by any means. It's a six month program. I'm speaking about the introductory program, so it's very condensed. And so um, there does need to be that commitment level. So all of this said though, um i probably couldn't count on both my hands my 10 fingers the numbers of applicants who haven't been accepted in the program in my 12 years with the organization so there's usually a really good fit so if you're considering the program i really do encourage you to go ahead and apply um, because chances are you're a great fit for the program and it's an opportunity um, that's actually just around the corner so our next intake starts in january and so there's no time like the present definitely so generally the program features of the web development certificate programs are first off there's an application process so the application is online there's a basic computer skills assessment that we also have our applicants complete again it's just online and a brief interview by telephone our intake as i mentioned is this january 2019 and then the advanced program will start directly after that in july 2019. now the curriculum is really structured and organized and our students really appreciate that so it's nice to follow along with there's lots of video tutorials Every week there's a classroom session live with the instructor and all the other students are in the classroom as well. And then these practicum projects are really a key because that gives you really the real world experience in creating something uh, that you can actually create your own portfolio and um, show physically that, that you've done the work, that you can do the work. Okay. So that's a lot of facts about our programs and ourselves, but what about the individuals ourselves that come to our programs? I really like this page because it gives you, I think, a really good idea of the diversity of the clients coming our way. So if I was to describe our clients in five, four words, pardon me, it would be talented, determined, savvy, um, but stuck, stuck in some way that their careers are, you know, have been set back or just haven't been able to get their feet on the ground. So, so it's really what um, characterizes so many of our clients. Here's a success story. This is Colin. 
And Colin has been working for many years since graduating uh, from the program in 2007 as a self-employed web programmer. I think that the best way to tell his story is just to give you his words. So Colin says, since taking the IBDE course, I have become more proficient and confident in developing websites. I have developed numerous websites since my graduation, and even my clients are impressed with my work. If it weren't for the IBDE course, I don't know what I would be doing as a career. The IBDE course and instructors have given me knowledge and confidence which have shaped my career as a successful freelance website developer. So I'll give you a little bit of background about Colin. He lives in Surrey, BC. Colin was an early graduate of our programs from 2007. Now, Colin has quite a history working in the IT field. He was working at a local agency. He began as a volunteer. It was a disability agency. He started out as a volunteer in their training room, in their training lab, training others. And he eventually got a position with the organization. And he loved it there. He loved it there. He had friends in the organization. And so it was meaningful employment for him. But unfortunately, Colin was having to travel an hour and a half to work each day because the organization was in Burnaby and he's in Surrey. And because Colin is a wheelchair user, he's a quadriplegic, um, he was suffering, his, his health was suffering as a result. So it was starting to go downhill and he realized that he was gonna have to find something different. And then he discovered our program and it's been a perfect fit ever since. Now, incidentally, Colin's actually now working as an instructor in our program. So, I mean, it's a double success, I think. And, and he's just great. He's, he's just great working with our students and loves teaching. So things have really flourished, I think, for us as well as for Colin as a result of his training. Here's another of our graduates. This is Cameron, and Cameron is from Ontario. Now, he's a more recent graduate. He graduated from both programs in 2013. He really killed it. So um, Cameron was really a strong student, for one thing, but that's not to say that he didn't face some difficulties. Cam experienced a, a di really difficult period, actually, during the advanced program but to his credit, he was able to communicate to us his difficulties. And of course, we're super receptive. Uh, when a student's undergoing certain difficulties, we're all ears. And we were able to come up with a plan together to give him some extra time, to give him the time to get his health in, in better order. And sure enough, um, Cameron was able to pull it together. He, he got in a better place with his health and successfully graduated from the program. And what I'm going to read to you is an email from an email that he sent us shortly after graduating. So after notifying a job coordinator of my completion of IBDE's program, I received a job posting via email Tuesday. I contacted the company Wednesday and landed an informal interview the same day. I had a 15 minute meeting with the head of the company in the afternoon and started 8 a.m. the next day for a work trial. I finished a simple project for the company my second day today and made some good progress on a second project. At the end of the day today, I found out I will be able to officially start on Monday, November 4th. Looks like finishing school in a highly popular field was a great choice. I wanted to thank all of you for your guidance and support throughout the past year. Completing a college program after failing to finish my university education was a great accomplishment for me. You have all been a really big help. So th that was hugely uh, a win for Cameron. Uh, super proud of him. And we've kept in touch through the years as well. Now the thing about Cameron, and he's very open about this, is that Cameron lives with bipolar disorder. And I've really spoken a lot with Cameron over the years. And Cam has a gift for conveying the true realities of living with such an extreme mental health issue. 
um, it's not just like you're having a bad day or even getting into a state of depression or a state of being a bit too happy or energetic. These are the extremes that he has to live with when he gets to the height and flying to the moon or when he's at, at a down situation and, and it's the worst of the worst of the worst the way you feel. And Cam blogs on his experience living with bipolar disorder. So I'm hoping Rory can type it in the chat area because if you have an interest and I, I really do recommend you take a look at his blog and read his articles. Um, if you if you haven't been closely touched with the realities of living with bipolar disorder, perhaps through a family member or something, can really give you that sense. And I do recommend it. So um, it the web web link is www.cam.majorminor.ca. So there it is. This is a little bit different. Um, in 2017, we really had a business client who showed amazing progress and her motivation in starting her business was to have everything ready by the opening of the tourist season. So she lives on Vancouver Island and she does these creations with waste wood. So some carving, um, you can see some lamps in the photos that she's created. And she had, she was hugely motivated to get this um, storefront opened by tourist season. And her um, business coach had these words at the end of her time in the program. We wish Elaine much success as she completes her business plan and opens her doors to a busy tourist season. So she actually was successful in meeting her goal. And uh, I think probably astounding herself as well as us here. And um, she was well on her way. So that's just one little success that I wanted to share. Now, what do our clients appreciate about our programs? Again, this came out of our study that we did. It was really interesting for us to hear the words coming back from our clients because any organization can toot their own horn and say, oh, you know, we're so understanding, we're so caring, um, we really focus on our clients or, you know, whatever, whatever they, they wish to say. but. To have this reflected back uh, from your clients themselves was really meaningful for us. We really grew as an organization. So these are the key things that our clients recognize in us. Our, uh, there's experience and expertise um, that they value this. They value that we, they're listened to and we're supportive, um, patient and understanding, accepting, personable and kind and I, I really am taken by the kind if you take a look at this visual even you can see experienced is really important it's really important that the staff is knowledgeable and can offer good um, knowledge and assistance and feedback but that 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 supportive has come out really almost equally as strong understanding accepting patient and then out on the fingertips the kind so uh, very touching and very valuable information for us okay i'm getting near the end of the presentation there's just a couple more slides here um, but I do want to focus in on a couple more client experiences through our programs. And speaking personally, it was a few years ago now, but I was in a meeting in the local community. It was a meeting of agencies. And the particular focus that day was discussing poverty. And I, we don't directly work in, in helping people in poverty per se. I think we're... We're more about careers, we're more about education, that's been our focus uh, mainly over the years. So I never really thought of our organization as one that's helping to alleviate poverty. But um, then I sort of put two and two together. These, these aren't new testimonials by any means, but I kind of paired the information together and I thought, you know, we, we actually are making a difference. Um, there's, 
you know, people aren't, if, if they can get ahead in the programs, they're not as impacted by their poverty situation as they were previously. So I'll just read through these. Um, first off, Kalinda from British Columbia said, it has been very difficult to come to terms with the changes in my life since the accident that left me with a brain injury three years ago. Programming in a quiet room is one of the few options I have now to contribute financially in my home. With this training, I have been able to participate again in the business my husband and I built over the last 14 years. We are now able to offer web design as an option for our customers. So I think she's really found um, a purpose again and some value in being able to participate in the family business. Now, Judy from British Columbia said, until I discovered Make a Change Canada, I felt completely lost and had truly given up on finding any work, let alone meaningful work that paid decently. It's been a huge come down from my previous life and I saw no hope or way out. However, between the online webinars and my business coach's wisdom and guidance, I now feel hope and curiosity again, rather than seeing no possibilities or opportunities, I see plenty. I feel excited for the first time in almost five years it's been since my head injury. This one here, um, really touching, Willie from Saskatchewan. The program was detailed and very instructive. The program helped us tremendously and it will help us make a living. Being a disabled person, I need that because I can't go out to work. This program allowed me to set up a home-based business for me and my wife to work at home. Okay, so I'll just leave those uh, quotations with you for food for thought. So moving towards the last few slides here, I promised that I was going to talk a little bit about our social enterprise. So as I mentioned, we've started a social enterprise called Rogers Fire Nuggets. And the idea here is that we're creating even additional opportunities for people. So over the years, we've noticed that there are certain clients who aren't fit, let's say, to go out in a mainstream role in the community and work, or they don't have what it takes to be an entrepreneur, don't feel that they could make it in such a career. Or they also can't um, successfully complete the web development learning. So uh, for them, there was a bit of a dead end. So the idea behind this social enterprise is that we're going to work with groups in the community. And these groups will produce the Rogers Fire Nuggets under their supervised programs. And then we'll do the marketing and sell these Rogers Fire Nuggets. So in essence, we're helping to create meaningful job opportunities for more people right in their communities. This Rogers Fire Nuggets idea was actually created by one of our own clients years ago, uh, Mr. John Rogers, who is in Nova Scotia. And John is a paraplegic and wheelchair user. And he just couldn't take it as far as he wanted. And so he's thrilled that we've taken the idea on and we continue to work with him on the rollout of the social enterprise. So it's really a win-win-win for everyone involved here. So closing up here, now we are a national charity. That's really important to keep in mind. Whether you want to take our programs or whether you want to give back to Canadian society, there's lots of ways to become involved. So we have several annual events and we're all about celebrating success. We run a student showcase and custom website competition and the next one will be in January 2019. So that's a really nice way to get involved is to view the student websites and go in and vote for your favorites. We also publish a desktop calendar every year and it's really, really lovely. And um, our 2019 calendar is now under production. And this is the sort of beautiful work um, that we put out, we publish 1,200 of these each year and distribute them all across the country as well as worldwide. 
and uh, it's truly enjoyed. I, when I go to take them around to community partners, they're looking up at me like this. And there's, they say, oh, I watch them each year. So they're truly cherished. And um, if you'd like a copy, please do drop me your address and we'll get you on the list. We love distributing these calendars, so it's really not a problem whatsoever. Another way that we always encourage our own clients to give back is if they're so inclined to become a program ambassador. So if you like what we're doing, then do spread the word because our own clients and graduates are our best um, promoters. You know, really it speaks for itself. So we do encourage that. Um, we also connect with employers in the community. So we're also connecting, let's say, with tech firms that need talent, that want to diversify their workforce and hire people with disabilities or hire youth. So, um, we do encourage businesses to hire our graduates as well. So that's another way, a very meaningful way to become involved as an employer. We are a charity and really it's my responsibility to also mention and not miss the fact that we do rely on donations. They, they help to provide the extra level of support that our participants need to succeed. And so I always wanna encourage that um, especially I think with our own graduates. So if they have a family member who's talking about donating and they don't know where, a good charity would be worthwhile to donate to, then maybe a graduate can say, hey, you know, there's this organization that really helped me and my family out get where I am today. And that would be my suggestion for you. So I just wanna plant those seeds of thought um, as well while I'm at it. Other ways to become involved are to become a volunteer. And I do get people writing in wishing to volunteer with our organization. Over the years with volunteers, we've been able to complete some very large projects. So in, for instance, when we became accredited, that was all done through the support and work of volunteers. And we threw also a 10 year gala um, celebration. And again, vol volunteers were key. We never would have been able to accomplish that. So there's these team volunteer projects which have been really meaningful and fun. But there's also some individual work. We've had um, volunteers closed captioning our training videos for the deaf and hard of hearing. So that's that's been nice work for people. Um, I've had some volunteers working with me on some HR documents. So there's some, some great possibilities if uh, you ever have an interest in volunteering then as a charity we definitely have a need. We're in all the mainstream social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and we have a link on uh, pardon me a group on LinkedIn but also a company page so I do encourage you to follow us on social media. We try and do a really good job of it um, and I've got to give some credit here to Rory so she does a beautiful job on on our postings and we try and make it meaningful and we've got some great testimonials coming out coming up and uh, blog blog articles and a whole feature on what it means to be successful from various perspectives so that's going to be interesting in future as well and we have an email list so do subscribe if you're so inclined we don't um we don't overload our subscribers with email, but it's always a great way to ensure that if we're putting out a newsletter that you're going to receive it. So, and this is our staff and board of directors here. And this is from, oh, a couple years ago now, but uh, we're very approachable. I think that that's the point. So do feel free to reach out at any time. We're always happy to hear from you, receive your questions, provide more information. And just, I'm always happy to speak with people about possible career options as well. So, so do feel free to reach out at any time. So that's it for today. Um, I would like to take a moment just to thank you, Sydney, uh, for attending today. It's been really a pleasure. We had a nice conversation at the beginning of the session. 
So I just want to thank you for attending today. Do feel free to, free to reach out. If there's something that um, you're still questioning, wondering about, we'd be happy to hear from you. So that's it for today. Thanks for attending. And um, hopefully you can attend future sessions as well. Thank you.